Hi guys. Uh, so I'm here doing some homework, some preparations for the Zigrig fishing. Because I'm working night shift this week, all my sessions will be extremely short to can run. So today I'm here at the chosen swim for my first attack. Basically I'm going to be looking at uh, the depth that I'm going to be fishing. The reason I'm doing that is so I can pre-tie my three depth sig rigs. And I'm going to sit here, it's now 10 o'clock. I'm going to sit here, this is about the time I'll arrive. See if there's any movement, any fish that show, because it is a fairly shallow. You can already see some feeding bubbles around in this small stretch. I'm just going to show you guys what the swim looks like and then I'll get to the feature finding or depth finding show you guys how I'm doing it it's pretty basic and yeah so it's just a short video keep the channel running I'm not going to let it die off again and I'll get back to you guys now so as you guys can see there, this is the swim. It's not far across, maybe about 30, 30 meters. Um, I'm gonna chuck my climbing line, feature finding line across, find a nice spot, nice depth that I'm planning to fish. I'm hoping to find a spot about six feet, six foot in depth, okay. Okay guys, I've done my little depth finding. Seems to average four foot from the island. I get about four foot, three foot, two foot, one foot to the bank. It's not very deep. So I'm gonna fish the four foot water. Then I'll be fishing a zig, probably at about three and a half foot, one at three foot or two foot two and a half and then one at one and a half foot depth I did see a fish turning on the corner of the island somewhere there sorry the glare on the screen is an alpine so now that I know the depth I'm gonna head back home tie up the zigs I'll show you how I tie them or how I'm going to tie them and hopefully this week I'll be back to fish a bit cheers so guys I hope you can hear me over the little waterfall this is just behind the outlet of the dam and I found this little pool I'm sure many people have fished it and I found like there against the little cliff it's five foot deep and it moves from five foot to three foot on this side with a little gully type thing over there which is shallow as deep as my float I think I've been thinking after I give the zigs a few sessions after each session with the zig I'll feed up I'll chuck a few boilies in here maybe just a few pieces of maize maize in them because I'm sure when the river, when the dam does pull up after heavy rain I'm sure maybe hopefully one or two carp have spooled over into this little little thing really small and even if there hasn't been a carp that's washed over I'm sure some fry have and in turn have eventually grown up because while sitting here while chucking the float around a bit I have seen a few fish turn not sure what species but heck if it's a carp it's a carp and I'll try catch one so look forward to this little segment hopefully in the next few weeks um, I'm back been walking up and down just casting the market float to random sections and I found the deepest spot I found was four foot which is the exact same that I found by the island so it seems like it is as everyone said extremely shallow 
but deep enough for the fish to survive. Uh, the one section I didn't get to plumb a bit is there between those jetty posts and the island, in other words the back of the island. The reason why we can't I can't plumb there is we're not allowed to fish that section of the dam for the birds nesting area. I guess conservation overrules fishing. Um, not that I'm complaining. I used to fish there. Had a few fish from that corner, but rules are rules. Got to stick to the rules if you want to catch fish. Uh, so yeah, so I'm done with my random plumbing. As I said, I get an average depth of four foot, maybe about four and a half foot. I wonder if you guys got that on camera. Fish just turned rolled over there. Hopefully that's on camera. It will be a nice little talk. Um, the swim I'm sitting in now is the last one. It's the corner swim. Uh, there's two corner swims. There's the one against the reeds that I usually fish. And then there's this one. This one uh, produced my second biggest carp here. Yeah? Uh, 9.43 kilos. Back in February 2009. It's also my first, one of my first fish here. Uh, after that fish I never came back to this session, well this swim, because I fell in love with catching fish off the island and off the snags, the reeds on the other side of the dam. I will be looking at fishing here over time, now that I know the depth of the dam is consistent throughout, uh, sig rig fishing might be easier. Now I can just have three basic lengths and fish wherever. So I'm going to start off fishing between the island and the bank. This shot from earlier, swim from earlier, known as swim five according to the layout. Um, and hopefully I catch something. If not, I'll give it another shot there. By the second time, I'm not lucky. I might give this swim a shot, but for this swim I'll bring out the spot for that mix, for the sloppy spot mix. Between the island and the bank, swim number five, I will just use my baiting spoon, because it's close enough. And we'll see what happens. Um, I did this kind of in a rush, I didn't have everything I wanted, so it worked, but I did come across a problem. So to show you what I'm doing, I've got a 30 pound braid on here. Full length, the full spool is that braid. Uh, I'm not worried about the color as it is just purely my marker float. Sometimes I spot with this reel. Then I've got a 4 ounce distance pair distance lead. I don't think that really matters what lead you have. If you just get in depth. Uh, I know there are better ones that will pick up more of the bottom if you are feature finding. Then to make things go easier I attach the Fox running rig little running clip I don't know what they called just to help the line move through easier. Then my gardener float I don't know if you guys can see that. I casted it and it hit the rocks on the island and bounced back in to the water so it didn't break off didn't break it still works yeah. so the problem I came across is when I reel my line down the swivel of the float goes into the hole like that and then the float pivots up and then it locks in place and doesn't matter how much line I let off the spool, nothing happens. Uh, to solve this problem, all I did was I'll pull the line tight, take up all the slack, give it a few jerks, release the line, and soon the float would come loose. Uh, to prevent that problem in future, I might put a bead running on you, big enough so that it cannot pass through you. Just just to make the life easier. So yeah, I'm gonna head home now. 
tie up those three rigs quickly put this video up so you guys keeps you guys interested and hopefully either Tuesday Wednesday I'll get a chance to do a session so I'm home now uh, basically I've tied up my three zig rigs I tied one at that's two foot in length one at one foot six inches in length and the other one at three foot so I might tie a few more at six feet intervals but these are the three I'm going to use. I tied the two foot one with a piece of black foam, the one foot six inch one with a piece of black foam and yellow, and the three foot one with black and white foam. What I used is Gardner Zig Link in 12 pound, some tungsten tubing, also by Gardner. Uh, the zig foam and size 12 mago hooks sorry it's all gardener this is all the local store had in stock at the moment um, so just to run you through the rig what it compromises of there's the piece of zig foam close up to the hook cool. then from there I run to a big eye swivel just to help with movement and I've got a piece of tungsten tubing on here I'm not sure what that does but in all the videos I've been watching on YouTube lately you guys suggest this helps with a better hookup from what I can make of it is when the fish comes in to suck in the zig if it's straight onto your swivel there's no play so there's no way so the fish struggles to suck it into the mouth with the tungsten on it is just heavy enough so the zig foam does not lift the tungsten but when the fish comes in to suck it the vacuum manages to lift this so it gives me an extra two inches movement play okay so I'm gonna upload this video quick and hopefully soon I will be fishing <laughs> 